Uh, last but not least in our six presentations is Yan Yu, and really pleased to introduce her. Uh, before I do that, I want to acknowledge Craig Fraley for all the work that he does as department head of the OBAIS department. A lot of amazing work going on across operations, business analytics, and information systems. Yan Yu is the Joseph S. Stern Professor of Business Analytics. She's been on our faculty since the year 2000. Please join me in giving a very warm welcome to Yan Yu. So I'm thrilled to present my research on forecasting default. First, I'd like to share a personal experience. Anything to blame is my husband, right? So my husband, not me, invested in this so-called principal protected bonds, invested brokered by Lehman Brothers. So you can guess what happened next, right? A decade ago, Lehman Brothers crashed, followed by global financial crisis, and we got barely 10% value back. So there are three key parameters here of interest. Probability of default, loss given default, and exposure at default. These are exactly three key risk parameters regulated by Basel for major banks followed by the global financial crisis. So one natural question one will ask, what are important predictors? Ultimately, we want to be able to accurately estimate these parameters. So over the years, my PhD students and I have built this co comprehensive corporate bankruptcy database, merging the market and the accounting statements. So what we find out is that using this variable selection technique called lasso variable selection, we find that market variables such as stock price, stock volatility, and the stock excess returns are important predictors while accounting statements, account, accountants here, so I want to please you as well. So accounting statements are also important. For example, variables like uh, net income divided by total assets are also very important, especially when the prediction horizon increases. If you are not only looking for like one month, one year ahead of prediction, but you are interested in also three year, five year ahead of prediction. So in a separate work, my collaborators and I developed novel a class of transformation discrete hazard model. In this work, we not only focus on the rankings, ratings, scores, like your credit scores, we actually estimate the actual probability of default, which is very essential, especially when get banks need to calculate their cash reserves. They need to use the numbers rather than just the rankings. So we are happy to report to the best of our knowledge, this work passes the collaboration test at the first time and can achieve the accuracy ratio over 80%. So clearly there are lots of opportunities in this area. I'm a data guy, data girl. <laughs> so people talk about big data, data science, but I want to say it's not about big data, small data. So there are, of course, lots of opportunities and the challenges in this area. For example, the database we com compiled here, corporate default prediction, we have over 1.5 million firm month observations. In another separate work with my collaborators at the Office of Comp Controller of the Currency, we actually study the foreclosure loans and over a billion loan month observations. Of course, that's huge data. So thanks to the current advancement in computing power, otherwise it's not possible. But huge data does not necessarily contain all the information we need. So let me pause quickly, ask you a quick question. What is UC's current credit rating? Triple A, anyone? Single A, plus. Single, A single, single A plus, any other guess? Double A, triple B, <laughs> triple B is too bad. Do you ever think UC will default? Not likely, right? Not very likely. So actually years ago, I received this UC e-currents news. Wow, celebration point. UC's credit rating upgraded from single A to double A. So right now, Moody's rating is double A here. So think about this. We don't think there's not much chance, we don't think much chance that for UC higher education or government entities to get default. But we still need to assign certain credit ratings in a way. We need to estimate the probability of default. So actually one of the challenges here are there are not so many events of interests like bankruptcy cases we want to see. 
And in one ongoing project we work on, we actually want to estimate the recurrent events and the companies will default come back or loans will default and come back. And this is newly regulated by the current banking industry. So I want to say there are challenges. One is about rare event. And another part is that even though we have a huge number of data, maybe there's lack of predictor information, not much predictor power. So finally, let me conclude here. It's not about big data, small data. It's about useful data and good quality data. Analytics is everywhere, of course. I'm a statistician. I have to advocate for my department, right? So various industries, we can apply similar techniques. And uh, st advanced statistical methodology, machine learning, artificial intelligence can be applied not only to like credit card industries, banking industries, but can help us to say promote marketing campaigns. And even in one project, we helped Cincinnati Zoo to increase their membership enrollment. So far beyond what we can do in risk management area. So I hope you share the same passion on analytics as much as I do. Thank you and let me turn back to Dan.